we will be solving this problem called the dice combinations. So our task is to count the number of ways to construct sum n by throwing a dice one or more times. Each throw produces an outcome between 1 and 6. For example, if n is equal to 3, there are 4 ways. So we will be given an n up to a million and we need to output the number of ways modulo a billion and seven and we do this because the answer might be very large and it won't fit in a int or a long long so let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution so let's work out this example for four we're gonna start with n equals four then our possible throws would be one two three four five and six so if we get a throw of one our problem would reduce to one where n equals three if we get a throw of two our problem would reduce to one where n equals two and the same for n equals three we would reduce to n equals one and if we get a throw that is equal to four then our problem would reduce to one where n equals zero but we wouldn't be able to get throws of 5 or 6 because these would go beyond our sum and they won't contribute to the number of combinations that sum up to 4 so we could just disregard these and then we will move on again to this node now uh, n is equal to 3 then our possible throws are 1, 2 and 3 so if we throw 1 then we would get uh, n equals 2 and so on and when we are done with constructing these three then each position that ends with a zero represents a valid way so we could reconstruct the sum here that sums to four by just going up this path and noting these values so one plus one plus one plus one is indeed equal to four and these are the possible combinations we get if we collect the values along the edges. So along this path, we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Along the second path, we would get 1 plus 1 plus 2, which represents this. Then 1 plus 2 plus 1, this. And then 1 plus 3, and so on. So in total, we have 8 possible combinations. So how would we go about coding this actual implementation? So we could implement this using a recursive function that would look something like this. So it takes in a value n, like 4 in this case, and then if n is less than 0, like it, that was the case with 5 and 6 here, then it just returns 0. And if n is equal to 0, like in these cases, it returns 1, meaning that there is a way of uh, forming the sum that is equal to 4. Otherwise, it just initializes a value here that is equal to 0 and it loops through all combinations from 1 to 6 included and it adds those combinations to the output here. Like when we started with 4 here, we went from 1 to 6 and each time we went 4 minus 1 would give us 3 so we would just add the number of possible combinations of 3 that are here and we would go through all the values from 1 to 6 and at the end we would just return the sum of all the possible combinations but this recursive function is very costly and it has a very large complexity and we can notice that by looking at the following so here is a diagram that represents what happens each time we want to calculate our recursive function for some value n so each time we're gonna take the sum of six values and that's gonna take us five additions and say we perform each additions in constant time c then to calculate this value here it's gonna take us five additions among this layer so here the cost is 5c then to get each one of these values it's gonna take us again five additions so in this second layer the total number of operations would be 5c times the six nodes we have so it's gonna be six times 5c then in the following layer each node here is gonna take five additions again and we would have 36 nodes in this layer 
So the total number of operations would be 6 times 6 times 5C. And this would go on for the following layers. And indeed, some uh, in the lower layers, some layers will finish before others because here we go by n minus 6, whereas here we just go by n minus 1. So we will just calculate an approximative upper bound to the complexity here, which would be something like 6 to the n times 5c, which is asymptotic to 6 to the n. So our complexity here is exponential and it is of order 6 to the n, which is huge. So it is obvious here that we cannot use this method to calculate the answer when n can be as large as 10 to the 6th. 6 to a million is way larger than anything that you can conceive. So we need to improve our complexity here. And if we go back to this diagram here, we can notice a few things. We can notice that many values here are redundant. So there is a value 1 here. There is also a value 1 here. And again here and here. And the same goes for 2. There is a 2 here and a 2 here again. So here when we want to calculate the combinations of 4, we would have that to be equal to combinations of 3 plus combinations of 2 plus combinations of 1 plus combinations of 0. And again, when we would want to calculate the combinations of 3, we would again add combinations of 2 plus combinations of 1 and so on. So we notice that we calculate things uh, many times when, when we don't need to do that. So here to calculate this value, we're going to need to calculate this value of 2. And again here, we would need to calculate this value of 2. And the same goes on for these values of 1. And if our 3 was larger, if we had a 5 here, for example, then here we would have 3, and then again we would need to calculate the value of 3 again. So when we are facing a situation like this, where certain values are calculated over and over again, this is an indicator that we would need to use something called dynamic programming, and more precisely, memorization which is an optimization technique that stores values that are needed many times and just returns the cached values when the same input is required again. So here we would like to know the number of combinations that sum up to 2 and there are 2 here, either we're gonna have 1 plus 1 or just 2. So we know that C of 2 is just equals to 2. So when we are at this position here, we wouldn't go ahead and calculate this again. So as soon as we see that we need to calculate a value that was already stored, we would just return 2 right away here without creating this sub 3 again. And the same would apply to 1 here. There is only one way to sum 1. So C of 1 would be equal to 1 and we would go ahead and erase all sub trees of 1. See how our tree became way smaller and this would be more evident if the tree was larger to begin with. So in this position where we would like to calculate the answer for 5, we would just get the answer for 3 right away here without going ahead and having all these values for 3 again. So now a word about implementation. We're gonna start by calculating these uh, values that are positioned at the leaves and then we will just move on from there. So the only initial value that we need to have here is the number of combinations for 0 which is equal to 1 and then we can go ahead and calculate C of 1 as being equal to C of 0 because that's the only value smaller than 1 and greater or equal to 0. So this would also be equal to 1 then c of 2 would be equal to c of 1 plus c of 0 and this would give us 2 c of 3 would also give us c of 2 plus c of 1 plus c of 0 which would be equal to 4 and notice here that when we get to position 3 
all the values that we require here were already calculated so we can just look them up in O of 1 and at most to calculate some value we will just need 6 values from i minus 1 to i minus 6 so each value is calculated in O of 1 and in general when we get to position n this would only would be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to 6 of c of n minus i and this can either be equal to some value that we already calculated or can be ignored if n minus i is strictly less than 0 and recall that we need to calculate this, this sum modulo our prime and that's pretty much it so our total complexity here will be 6n which is just a symbolic to n and notice how this is way smaller than the initial complexity we started with which was of 6 to the n so let's go ahead and check out the code so I define this variable mode here to be equal to the prime number that I need to take modulo with and then I'll start by reading n then I will declare a vector of long longs that will store the number of combinations for each n and I will go up to n plus 1 to include this n and I will initialize my array with zeros and I chose long long here to avoid any overflow issues then I will initialize the number of combinations for 0 with 1 and then I will just go through all the values from 1 to n included and look through all possible values from j equals 1 to 6 included and if i minus j is greater than or equal to 0 then I will just add this value to the number of combinations for the actual value i and I just take this modulo mod and at the end the value at index n of combinations will represent the answer so I'll just print that so let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye